we are going to be rebuilding Manchester United from FIFA 15 all the way to FC 25. The Red Devils Manchester United have not won a Premier League title since Sir Alex Ferguson left over a decade ago. And with Eric Ten Hag being sacked, it looks like they might not win it for a while yet. But this is the team, ladies and gentlemen, that Manchester United used to have way back in FIFA 15. We had a front three of Falcao and Robin Van Persie, one of the last players that actually won a Premier League title for Manchester United. Wayne Rooney still had a decent overall. You got Juan Mata, 85 rated, and even Angel Di Maria, 86 overall. Don't think he had a great time at Manchester United. An 85 rated David De Gea, a pretty shoddy looking defense to be honest. But that's where we come in. We are gonna sign and sell players in FIFA 15 with this Manchester United squad. We're then gonna take that exact same team over with us to FIFA 16 and do that all the way to FC 25. Manchester United in real life in the last 10 years have only won five trophies, two FA Cups, two Carabao Cups, and a Europa League. Our goal today is to try to make Manchester United once again the best, most dominant team in England. So let's get into it. Be sure to like, be sure to subscribe, and let's begin. Now starting off things here, we can see we've got about a $50 million budget. Not that high, to be honest. So to get the budget up, I've transfer listed a couple of players, some that are worth a bit of money, like Michael Carrick here. I think I can probably afford to let him go at 32 years of age. And even players like Ashley Young, for example, I think even he is not safe. He's on the chopping block. And we're gonna need to try to raise the cash because there's one person I'm particularly keen on trying to bring in. I want to try straight away to recall Cristiano Ronaldo. He's still in his 20s, 92 overall. I want to get him back after spending the last six years at Real Madrid. He's going to cost us quite a bit though, at over 100 million. Uh, we're going to have to sell someone or try to trade maybe to make something happen. And I do have maybe one player I was willing to let go to make that happen. And that is Angel Di Maria. Absolutely quality player, but maybe not quality for Manchester United. If we could swap Di Maria plus some cash to bring back Cristiano Ronaldo, oh, I would do that in a heartbeat. First, however, we've got to sell some players. Uh, De David De Gea is not going to be one of them. I also forgot to mention there was another player I wanted to bring in this season. That was Casemiro. We'll see if we can make that happen too. And I also happened to search up another certain midfielder playing in Portugal, and that is Ruben Amorim, the only new Manchester United manager. I thought it'd be funny to bring him in, even though he literally retires at the end of this season. But we'll do that if we can. Right now, it's all focused on seeing if we can bring back Ronaldo, which we're going to need all the cash we have to get it done. Oh my God. God, this was a player I wasn't really intending on selling straight away, but look at the money apparently we could get for him. Arsenal willing to pay 40 million for an 18 million pound Javier Hernandez. And according to my chief executive, I could get between 66 to 100 million. Are you for real? Oh my God, I am going to test that out for sure. See, I would be happy with 60, but let's see if they will go for 70. I don't want to scare Arsenal off. Yes, maybe I could get 80, but like, I just can't believe that. Well, they've come back and barely upgraded their offer at all to 46 million. Honestly, I mean, if you could have told me before that I would have gotten maybe 50 million for Javier Hernandez, I'd have taken it. Bloody hell, they still won't even take that. They're hard bargainers, man. I'm still taking that. 46 million for Javier Hernandez. I don't know what my chief executive's saying. I could get 100 million, but we're accepting that. Well then, our budget is now up to 86 million. And honestly, we have enough now, I think, to try to make a move for Ronaldo. Oh my God, look at this. I can't actually, oh, I can't actually include Di Maria as part of the deal. Probably because he just got here. Well, maybe in that case, and I, I mean, this is going to be a pretty tough thing to do, but Robin Van Persie, I might include in the deal as well. He's 87 now, yes, but he will fall off pretty soon. So we're going to go 80 million plus Robin Van Persie. What does Real Madrid make of that? They are going to accept it. Oh my goodness. There he is back 
at Manchester United. 92 rated, the highest rated player in the team. And you'll notice that we have rejigged the formation. We've moved to a 4-3-3. Falcao is up top. Di Maria is the right wing. Rooney at center attack in midfield. And then you've got Mata. You've still got that back five, which or back four, which we'll sort out in a second. But you know what else we did with the little bit of remaining cash we still had? We did go ahead and pick up Casemiro. So we are, instead of getting him toward the end of his career and enjoying what's left of him, we're going to hopefully get to enjoy a prime Casemiro at Manchester United as well. Now, in real life, Manchester United finished fourth in this Premier League season. They have won zero Premier League titles in the last 10 years. Can we start off this rebuild by winning one with Ronaldo back? Unfortunately, it looks like no, we're probably going to finish. In fact, we are going to finish in the exact same place that real life Manchester United did, fourth place. There are still some games left to go, but we can't finish any higher or lower. We aren't going to win the Capital One Cup. Bloody Southampton took that out against Sheffield Wednesday. But we will make it to an FA Cup final and we're taking on our rivals, Manchester City. Well then, it is a repeat of the last real life FA Cup. No Premier League title on Cristiano Ronaldo's return season, but we might be able to get him an FA Cup. How good is it to have this legend back? This is probably the last game we'll have Falcao for. Of course, he was a low knee. I wonder if he's going to bag today. I wonder if Ronaldo's going to bag one today. Let's get this one underway. FA Cup final, Wembley Stadium packed. Here we go. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. One matter. You have that in your locker. I don't really know what I was thinking there when I pulled the trigger with bloody what? Yaya Torre all over my backside and Joe Hart has just watched this sail in. I knew long shots in FIFA 15 were all right, but I can't believe he didn't even try to go for it, man. What are you doing? We take the lead in the FA Cup like that. I can't believe it. How about Ronaldo? Can he get himself in on the long shot action? I'm just going to have a pop. Why not? Oh my God! Oh <laughs> What is going on here? This is unbelievable. Ronaldo is back at Wembley and look at what he's doing. That is, oh my God. See, Joe Hart tried to get that one, but even then he couldn't. This is unbelievable. Two in a row. That is the best of the lot. Oh, and he busted out the old iconic celebration. They took that out of the game. No. Oh my god, no. Oh my god. Oh my god. What in the hell? We knock the header down after Joe Hart's clearance and he has first time done that. This is unbelievable. I just shot because I didn't think he had a chance of even getting it. Every shot goes in from like 30 yards out. This is outrageous. There has never been three goals scored back to back to back that have been as good as that ever. I can't believe it. Oh, yeah, go on. Brought it back in a great spot. Finish it off with... Oh, no, get up. Get up. Ronaldo can finish it. Ha, <laughs> ha. Yeah, why not celebrate a fourth goal and an FA Cup title now? I went for the foul cow chip. It didn't quite work out. But Ronaldo, as ever, is such a goal sneak and a poacher. And he cleans up the mess. What a way to finish it off. It is an FA Cup title. A brace from Ronaldo. What a game. What a bunch of banger goals we scored to get it. We don't start off with a Premier League, but we will start off with silverware, taking home our first trophy of the rebuild. And the honours will go to our captain. It is Wayne Rooney. That lifts up our first trophy of this rebuild. Very good start. Hopefully there's a lot more where that came from. And with Ronaldo back in the team, surely it will be. We do again finish fourth. Chelsea win the league. Once again, though, a reminder, we are going to be losing Falcao because he was only a low knee from Monaco. So I don't know. We might need to move maybe Rooney back forward or something like that. Regardless, we will figure it out. That is your starting 11. Here are your substitutes. Here are your reserves. And now let's head on over to FIFA 16. Now, this season, Manchester United did sell, of course, Angel Di Maria for 60-something million to PSG. They also sold Chicharito to Leverkusen for only like 12 million. We got way more. 
for him than that. They also brought in plenty of players, but I'm not going to recreate all of them, only a handful. Players like Morgan Schneiderlin, they brought in for 35 million. We can recreate that one. And we're also going to recreate that of Bastian Schweinsteiger because he has a huge overall. 82 for Schneiderlin, but 86 for Schweinsteiger. So those two immediately become our highest rated midfielders. Let's just go ahead and do it. Of course, we've still held on to Di Maria. Hopefully he's liking his time at Manchester United a little bit more this time around. Now, because I didn't go and recreate the signing of Matteo Damian, we still don't really have a right back. I've got Phil Jones playing in that position right now. So I am thinking of a right back. I am thinking of Danny Carvajal, only 81 rated, 23, still quite young. And I reckon he would be a player that would be a solid overall for a long, long time. I also have another player in the shortlist, Andre Onana, but only 19. We brought Casemiro into Manchester United way earlier. Let's do it with a backup goalkeeper that I am sure eventually will turn into at least a decently rated keeper. Onana will surely cost nothing. We can just chuck two mil uh, Ajax's way for him. Danny Carvajal, though, might run us close to 20. I'm going to offer 18. I'm going to accept offers as well for Antonio Valencia, you know, the guy that was like kind of a, a faux right back for Manchester United. And also Michael K off to Everton, I reckon we can probably let him go to. But nice one, we agreed to a 24 million pound release clause for Danny Carvajal, he is coming to Manchester United. He joins a back line now of Marcus Rojo, Phil Jones, and Luke Shaw. I mean, goddamn, De Gea did some heavy lifting. We still need to work on that defense. But he still have 40 million in the bank. I mean, who's the best center back we can get? I've got two options. I've got Mats Hummels from Dortmund, only 26 years of age, you've got to remember. And then we have got Sergio Ramos, slightly higher rated, 29 years of age, and surprisingly is actually a lot cheaper than Matt Hummels. 35, maybe 36 million is what he's going to cost. But again, if we could bring Sergio Ramos to Manchester United, I would do that in a heartbeat. Matt Hummels looking like he'll cost basically the exact same. So we will literally just see who's willing to go. Dortmund come back with a 50 million pound price tag for Matt Hummels, but Real Madrid are accepting their 35 million pound offer. Well, this is definitely gonna help hope, hopefully solve our defensive issues. Ramos joins Manchester United. He's coming to Old Trafford. We've just taken half of Real Madrid's back line, Carvajal and Sergio Ramos. That is amazing. And when you remember that we stole bloody Ra Ronaldo from them last season as well, seriously, we're just turning into Real Madrid light. And you remember something? Real Madrid won the Champions League in 2016. Will we do it now? Well, before we check on the Champions League, look at that. We have won our first Premier League title. We fix our defensive issues. We have a pretty decent defensive record, only 26 conceded for the whole season. And we have won the title with a game to go. Cristiano Ronaldo to step up and... Oh, drill it into the roof of the net. Yeah, come on, son. We are winning our first Premier League title. It's already done, but we are doing it now. Wrapping it up here at Old Trafford with a pen from who else but Cristiano Ronaldo. Boom. How good to have him back in this stadium. Oh, and he gets up and heads it in for a second. Oh, he's on fire. How good to have him back in the red, man. Oh, he can't be stopped. Even from a corner, that is a ridiculous header. 24 goals in the Premier League, too. I mean, that is a decent haul. Oh, that's a great ball up over the top. First time volley. Oh! <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, there's no way we would have won this Premier League without him. God, with an absolute bullet of a volley off of that left foot. That is what we want to see. Come on. First half, Ronaldo hat trick. How else do you want to wrap up a Premier League title? But an absolutely brilliant season from the look of it. We signed half of Real Madrid, half of Spain, really. And we have taken home our first Premier League title in a long time. Well, actually, technically, uh, we only would have won our last one, according to this timeline, about three or so years ago. So it's not been that bad. But nonetheless, we will take it. We have got an FA Cup and now a Premier League title. That's something Manchester United haven't won in the last 10 years. So we will take it here. 
hopefully the first of many with plenty more seasons left to go. No Carabao Cup and unfortunately no FA Cup. And in the Champions League, we actually got dumped out in the semi-finals by Barcelona pretty brutally as well, to be honest. But regardless, though. So actually, only the one trophy this season. But with it being a Premier League, that makes me very happy. Finally, we got that one ticked off. Good looking. Let's move over to FIFA 17. Anyway. Quite a number of players leaving on a free this season from Manchester United, like Victor Valdez ended up going to Middlesbrough, and Schweinsteiger, he ended up leaving to go to the MLS. But we've held on to Victor Valdez as a backup goalkeeper. He's been good to back up De Gea. We also still have Schweinsteiger, but he won't be in our starting 11 anymore because we have made a big signing or two. We're not going to recreate the signings of Henrik Mkhitaryan or Eric Bailly, but we are recreating the signings of Zlatan Ibrahimovic, who joined on a free. He comes in from PSG, and we're also going to bring in from Juventus the return Pog back. It's Paul Pogba. They spent a hundred million to get him. We're recreating that transfer, which means we have two 90 plus rated players in our front three. Di Maria 87. Our midfield is Rooney Pogba and Juan Mata. Our horrible defense, like a year or two, is now suddenly all 80 rated with Sergio Ramos and Carvajal in it. Bloody Smalling's up to an 84. De Gea's up to a 90. This Manchester United team just became like a, a level of above world class in just two seasons. We also added in, of course, Anthony Martial, and look who's come up from the Youth Academy. It is Marcus Rashford as well. Even bloody Jesse Lingard's up to a 77. He'll feature maybe for a little bit in a season or two. God damn, I hope we maximize trophies this season because, whoa. What a starting 11. That's amazing. And even though I'm very happy with that starting 11, I'm still looking to screw over possible rivals of mine. And so I am looking into the signing of Virgil van Dijk right here about a season or two before he joins Liverpool. Chris Smalling will not be 84 rated forever. So why not get a possible Sergio Ramos, Virgil van Dijk center back partnership going at Old Trafford. Southampton accept and we bring in Virgil van Dijk. Thank you very much. We screw over Liverpool and we know we're going to have an insane back line in the future. This wasn't a bad season in real life for Manchester United. They didn't win the Premier League, obviously, but they did win the Europa League and I believe the Carabao Cup as well. We aren't in the Europa League, though. We're in the Champions League. What can we get this season with a team that good? Well, at the end of the season, oh my God, I think we have been done so brutally here. You have got three teams tied for points at the end of the season and we despite winning an extra game will not take it out because of goal difference look at the goal difference we were one goal away from City and two away from Arsenal that is insane to think if maybe they had just rejigged it where the team with the most wins get the league we would have it but Oh my god, that is unbelievable. Spurs were there as well. They were one point away too, with the highest goal difference in the league. That is one of the craziest, tightest finishes I've ever seen. No Carabao Cup again. That competition, it's evading us. And no FA Cup either. Which means it all comes down to the Champions League. But look who knocked us out. A very surprising team to make the final. Olympic Lyon. So this team, the best team that we've had by far in this rebuild, is the first one that goes trophyless. I, I can't believe it. And by like two goals in, on goal difference as well. I mean, bloody hell, man. That is rough. It is a great team to go trophyless. We've still only got the two then, and we've been so close to a Champions League final now on two occasions. Can it happen in FIFA 18? <laughs> Now this season, Manchester United ended up saying goodbye to Wayne Rooney, who left to Everton on a free. So too did Morgan Schneiderlin. And also Zlatan Ibrahimovic went over to the MLS, but here's the thing, I would have been happy to have kept him. He's not actually in this build of FIFA 18. And because the game is well dead, as in there are no servers, you can't update it anymore. He's just not in the game. But that is okay though, because we did see Romelu Lukaku join Manchester United in real life. I can recreate that signing. And an 86 rated Lukaku is a very similar overall to what Zlatan would have been. That's the only transfer I'm gonna recreate. We're gonna ignore the signings of Nemanja Matic Lindelof and also Alexis Sanchez. 
uh, especially Alexis Sanchez. We also see, by the way, shout out Casemiro, who finally comes into the starting 11. The only other change maybe is Daily Blind, who somehow now is higher rated than Luke Shaw. Is that a problem area? It's the lowest rated position in our starting 11. Maybe what I can do then is try to go for another player that would be all right in that left back position, like maybe Lucas Hernandez. Only 76 rated now. I feel like he'll get higher rated than that, even though he is only a center back. We have the same issue with Rafael Guerrero. He's a left midfielder, but can also play left back and he's 81 rated. Higher rates for sure, so a better play for us now. And we have the cash. I think I might go, honestly, for the both of them. It's not really an issue. We've got the cash. I can pay the release clause and we can get both of these players in. Guerrero can move in immediately to that left back position then. Just a slight increase there. And as for you, Lucas Hernandez, well, we'll just watch your development with great interest. Maybe eventually he'll get into that starting 11. While I'm down here, by the way, shout out to a certain Scott McTominay, who's come up from the Youth Academy as well. 63 overall. He should hopefully get a bit higher rated than that. Also forgot to mention that Victor Valdez is actually retired or he's no longer in the game. So we're back only to having two goalkeepers in David De Gea and Andre Onana. But I did notice we've got Dean Henderson loaned away right now. Only 61 rated, but I can probably recall him. It's going to cost us absolutely nothing to do it, you know, just to make sure we're up to three keepers. Nice one then. Okay, we went trophyless somehow last season. The team, in my opinion, maybe didn't exactly get better, but hopefully we can still pull out a trophy somewhere. Looking at the Premier League, we're back up on top. Come on, we get a very similar point total to last season, but this time, no shenanigans, we take it. We cannot take the Carabao Cup and the FA Cup. We actually lost in the final. Would you believe it to Watford? That was a real opportunity lost at uh, claiming another trophy. Hopefully we don't slip up in this one, the Champions League. It's Bayern Munich versus Manchester United. Finally, we got past the semi-finals. We're into the big dance. A second Premier League title is awesome to add on, but a Champions League, that's what we've been missing. And we've got the chance here to do it, but we've got quite the foe ahead of us in order to take down. Now being led by Captain Cristiano Ronaldo in the final as well. No Ibrahimovic, so Romelu Lukaku gets it kicked off, but we're underway. Let's see if we can get our first European Championship of this rebuild. Deflection. Oh my God, Lukaku, what sort of touch is that? Exactly what we'd expect from him. What's Pogba got up his sleeve? A little bit of space to carry it forward here. And, oh, I love that ball. Ronaldo, no fingertips again, Neuer denies Cristiano. Means we get the corner, though. A ball whipped in, not a bad one. Guess who it's there for? Come on! Who else would it be? It's Ronaldo. Sue in the UCL final. Had to be him, didn't it? This is why we got him in for this moment. What a header into the top left corner. With all that coverage, he still puts it superbly into the top. Right on the hour mark. How about that? Oh, 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 that's not good from Sergio Ramos. I don't like that. I don't think it's going to be. Oh, it's not even a card. Wow, that's fortunate. There's less than five minutes to go. I reckon they have chance for one more attack, maybe, Bayern. And here it comes. Crossed in, delivered, cleared away. Only right back to him. Please, no, not like this. That was clean. I think it is. I think it is. Herrera's going to seal it. There we go. It's going to be Cristiano Ronaldo's goal in the 60th minute. And we win our first UCL of the rebuild. Our first since, what, 20, 2009? Pardon me, 2008. Unbelievable. Finally, we get the fourth Champions League in Manchester United's career at long, long last. Get in there. That's going to take us to two Premier Leagues, an FA Cup, and now a Champions League hoisted up by Captain Cristiano. And I mean, come on. If anyone was going to get the goal today against Bayern, who else was it going to be apart from CR7? Magnificent. Well, that's the two trophies that Manchester United haven't won in real life ticked off. The Premier League and the Champions League in the last 10 years, that is. Now let's just try to keep stacking them on as we head over to FIFA 19. Now, it was a pretty quiet transfer window for Manchester United. Not a lot of big outs, but in terms of ins, it wasn't crazy either. They spent, what, 60 million on Fred from Shakhtar Donetsk. I don't think we'll recreate that one. 
I reckon we can definitely pick up Diogo Dallo for, I think, only 22 million they spent on him. Yeah, we can get that for sure. 74 rated, but he will definitely eventually be a threat to Carvajal's position, or at least be in contention. We see Lucas Hernandez has shot way up to 83 overall. So yeah, he's now our starting left back. And at right wing, we've got Anthony Martial, 84. He's our next highest rated winger, although he technically is only preferred on the left-hand side. We don't really have a proper right winger to play in that area. I mean, we, we could maybe put uh, Di Maria there and move in for another center attack and midfielder. I could possibly do that. Yeah, honestly, our midfield options are a bit light. Maybe I will go for a center attacking midfield. But before we do that, let me just quickly shout out another player up from the Youth Academy. Never really heard of this guy before, but uh, Mason Greenwood. Hopefully he'll just, you know, be a nice, sweet boy. Nothing controversial. We'll, we'll never, never physically assault anyone. So yeah, we'll, we'll see how his career pans out. Oh no, oh no, 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 no. Oh, oh no, I dropped my controller. Oh no, what happened? Oh no, we... Don't tell me we quick sold him when I dropped my control. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, well, guess that's the last we've seen of Greenwood. We've got a huge amount of transfer budget available, and I'm going to spend that on that center attack in midfield. And that player I'm thinking of is Kai Havertz, 19 and 83 overall. Wow. Hasn't gone to Arsenal, hasn't even gone to Chelsea at this point. Yeah, that would be a nice pickup. I am aware that we have another center attacking midfielder joining us next season, and he's going to be pretty bloody good. To those of you that know, you know. But until that player joins, I'm happy to roll with Kai Havertz at center attacking midfield. All right. Wow, what a team we've got here. Solid defense, 91 rated goalkeeper. Ronaldo's up to a 94 in the midfield. It's looking okay with, you know, plays that are going to only get better. And adding in Kai Havertz to Manchester United, I'm sure that doesn't hurt. We are the reigning Premier League and European champions. Will we go back to back in either of those competitions or maybe even both? Oh, how about it? We came so close again to losing it out, but you know, we just managed to secure another Premier League title. That's three now. We simply can't win the Carabao Cup. I don't know why, but the FA Cup, we win on penalties against Spurs. So we beat them to the Premier League and to the FA Cup. Premier League, tick. FA Cup, tick. And a Champions League final. We are going for a treble. It will be Atletico Madrid in the final as well. I wondered, you know, if we'd be going back to back in the Prem or Champions League. We might be going back to back in both. Can we make it then a treble against Atletico Madrid by winning this Champions League final? Of course, we took Lucas Hernandez off this mob as well. So he's returning to face them too. Very spicy storylines. Cristiano Ronaldo comes back as well. Let's get it then in the Estadio Santiago, whatever it's called. Blah, blah, blah. Who cares? We're here for the trophy, not for the name of the stadium. The Metropolitano. Bloody, that's what it's called. Oh, that's a nice pass. Ronaldo is through here. Oh, he's a bit slow. Lovely move, though. And top bins finished. We get it. You knew he'd go off here in Madrid, here against Atletico. He was a little slow on the turn, to be honest, but the, oh, the McGeady spin will do it just fine. Oh, great tackle from Ramos. I don't know if we have any time to go up the other end. No, we're going to run out of time, but that's okay. Who else but Cristiano to give us the lead in the Champions League final? We are looking at two in a row right now, if we can hold it out. Making changes, trying to see out this game with only 20 minutes to go. They're bringing on a Ballon d'Or winner, a future Ballon d'Or winner. They just don't know it, Atletico. Wonder if I should try to make a move for Rodri. I'm not sure. I think if that is on side, he might get to it. The goalkeeper will hold that comfortably, and that's going to be a free kick. Yeah, a yellow card for Lukaku. That's fine. That's just eating into the clock. Not long left to go, and it's done. It is over. We are champions for a second straight year in the Champions League. And once again, it is only the one real goal by Ronaldo that is able to secure it for us. Let's get it then, ladies and gentlemen. Another Champions League title. And we are on a roll in this competition now. My, maybe we will go for the three in a row that Real Madrid managed with Ronaldo. We also, of course, complete the treble with that too. Unreal. What? What? We are ridiculously good right now. Drink it in, lads. Hopefully, this is only still the start. Seven trophies so far. Over to FIFA 20.
This season, Manchester United did sell on Romelu Lukaku to enter for good money, like 74 million. And they spent a heap of money as well on three players particularly, and I'm going to go for all three. First one's that center attacking midfielder I was talking about earlier. Bruno Fernandes comes in 85 rated. In fact, Kai Havertz has already lost his starting 11 spot. They also brought in Aaron Wan-Bissaka as well as a certain Harry Maguire. I can't believe they spent 87 million for him. But regardless, I will go ahead and bring him in anyway. I mean, he's on the bench and he's about the same rating as Chris Smalling right now, but I'll still get it. I'm transfer listing a few players as well, like Wayne Rooney. To be honest, he's just not going to be in the game pretty soon, so it's time to cash in on him. Phil Jones, Rojo, and also Jesse Lingard's going to start a bit of a slide soon as well. So we are getting those players sold off. Like Jesse Lingard, we've uh, we've pawned off to Chelsea. And looking at our starting 11, I just don't see anywhere that we immediately need to see an improvement. But I will move for another sort of backup midfielder for now. How about this fella, Bruno Gimmerich, currently at Lyon. A nice player I know is going to get up and overall. He looks nothing like that in real life, we'll put it that way. But anyway, he is in because we're going to need some, you know, younger, higher rated midfield talent in the future. And off we go again. What are we winning this season? No Premier League this season. Can you believe it? It's actually very similar to real life bloody Premier League table with Liverpool and Man City going head to head like it. But no, it is unfortunately quite a fair way off for us. 10 points. We lost the Carabao Cup on penalties to goddamn Manchester City. And we lost the FA Cup final. Oh my God, also on penalties. And on top of all of that, no Champions League final. We have gone trophyless. We could have got two. Oh, that's a stinker of a season. God damn it, that sucks. I wonder if the injury of De Gea did anything. Uh, I'm not sure, but gosh, to think we could have picked up another two, but we got nothing. Brutal. All right, well, over to FIFA 21. Now, how about this for some transfers in for Manchester United? We're talking Donny van der Beek, their most expensive signing from Ajax. Don't think that worked out. Not going to go with that one. They got Alex Tellez in. They got uh, Edison Cavani actually in for a free. Slightly tempted maybe to go for Cavani, but I'm not going to recreate, I don't think, any signings that real-life Manchester United made this time around. I'm very aware that my front three is getting on a bit. It is actually quite old, to be honest, and even my backup strikers are probably going to be or attackers a little older as well. And here are some of those younger options, like Bakayo Saka, 79 rated, going to cost us 50 million almost on his own there, but I would say I see some promise in this lad. I'm also going to snake a crosstown rival in Cole Palmer. 59 rated, 18 years of age. Why the hell would I want to go for him? Oh, I don't know. I think he's got some promise about him as well. He's going to cost us a little bit less than Saka. Yeah, just a little bit. About 50 times less. Love how I'm sitting across the table from Pep Guardiola to discuss a 59 rated player. But either way, the deals are done. Cole Palmer is in nice and early. Bakayo Saka. I think he's more of a chance of getting into the starting 11 a little earlier than Cole Palmer will. Still happy though with the overall starting 11 of my starting 11 it's just that uh, how long will that stay for we've got some players that are going to be on the slide and dropping off a bit i'm also aware you know david de gea he's going to leave manchester united in real life quite soon i'd love to hang on to him but he i don't even think he will be able to get him in fc24 i don't think he was even in that game we shall wait and see we are trying to get back into winning the premier league we are of course chasing a third champions league as well can we make that happen? We are sadly going to finish third again, this time again, only, uh, you know, seven points this time to Manchester City. No Carabao Cup, still no Carabao Cup final appearance and no FA Cup final appearance. This is, uh, I don't know where this is coming from because we're not in the Champions League final either. We're still making the Champions League, which, okay, great. That's like bare bones minimum what I'm happy with right now, but Still another trophyless season. In the last two years, I've brought in a lot of good young talent, but I might need to splash some cash on some solid options, highly rated right now, especially as we move over to FIFA 22. Now, there were some pretty decent additions into Manchester United this season. One we've already made in Cristiano Ronaldo. We brought him back way, 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 way long ago. But they also brought in two other names that I'm definitely going to recreate. And that is Rafael Varane and Jaden Sancho they brought in for 85 million. Varane is going to start now. I mean, we do still have an 86 rated Sergio Ramos, but with age, he'll probably drop off 
Varane, a little bit younger. And then we got Jaden Sancho on the bench. I know in real life that transfer didn't quite work out, but 85 overall, as if I'm turning that down. We finally see a bit of a change to the starting 11 as a result. Varane is in, everyone else is still the same. Pogba I know is going to drop off in overall soon, so we will maybe see a little more additions into the midfield. And aside from that, it still stayed relatively the same. But we are going hard with new players in this season, and these are some of the players I'm looking at. Raphael Leao, we've got Florian Ver as well only 18 could get him in as well as another German midfielder slash attacker in Jamal Musiala will we have enough cash to secure all three of these players it could definitely be possible with a 160 million pound budget Leao is going to cost probably maybe 70 million we got Florian Verts costing about 80 so that's 150 right there actually I'm just going to throw down offers and see if I can make all three happen but I mean it may not happen so in the end I've agreed for Leao for 66 million million Florian Verts for a little over 80 million and Jamal Musiala for 30 which I think is something like 170 million so we may have to pick and choose here I'll probably go with Florian Verts first so we're bringing him in the most expensive then I think out of Leao and Musiala I'll probably go with Rafael Leal right now. I reckon he'll be the next choice. That leaves us with Jamal Musiala. Do we have enough cash? Accepting the offer. We do just have enough cash. Our budget is down to nothing, but all three of those young superstars come in. Oh man, let me tell you, we are looking really, really set for the future. Florian Verts is definitely going to be a threat. Musiala as well, and Liao eventually to start hitting that starting 11. I signed Florian Verts in my actual Manchester United career mode. Now I've signed him in the rebuild. Come on, let's see what we get this season. Can we please get back to winning some silverware? Well, this is one of the crazier things I have seen. How the hell have Wolverhampton Wanderers beaten us to the Premier League title? They've done a goddamn Leicester with names like Lewis Dunk, Raul Jimenez, Huang He Chan. Yeah, they still got Pedro Neto and Ruben and Ruben Neves, but I, I still can't believe that's a team that could win the Prem. Finally, though, at last, a Carabao Cup title has been won for the first time in this rebuild, and we're up to FIFA 22. Unfortunately, can't do a double in the FA Cup, and the competition we appeared to be the strongest in at the start of this rebuild, the Champions League, it's drying up for us there as well. Not making finals now for quite a number of years but hey at least we've added a ton of young talent in this season i can't wait to see what we're going to look like in a couple of seasons from now and finally we ticked off that carabao cup so that's everything available to us we've won i would just love to finish though with another premier league at least and hopefully another champions league let's head over over we go to fifa 23 now this season, after bringing him back for almost 100 million, Paul Pogba left on a free again to Juventus. He's 85 rated right now. We'll still hang on to him, but I know that overall is going to drop off and he eventually will just drop out of FIFA. In real life, they made the signings of Anthony for 95 million, Casemiro for 70 million. We already got Casemiro way, way back, so we're fine there. No need to spend a crazy amount of cash. But the other two real life transfers I will recreate will be that of Lissandro Martinez and one that maybe some of you aren't exactly anticipating but Marcel Sabitzer yeah remember that he came over for a season from Bayern Munich and honestly I would like to hang on to him because I know he's a good midfielder and he'll get better Mikhail Saka has moved into the left or right wing position now that Di Maria's kind of dropped off down to an 84 may as well get him in Varane as well is in now with Ramos kind of getting a little bit older and lower in overall. Romelu Lukaku, who we've had playing at striker for a while now, I'm definitely wary his overall is going to drop down into the low 80s soon as well. So I may be thinking of replacing our number nine. We've got a good budget this year, just like we kind of do every year. And you know what? I want to make a move for Harry Kane, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, in real life, we know he goes to Bayern and he's done pretty well at Bayern, aside from the whole still having not won a trophy thing. But maybe we can change that for him. It's going to be about 150 mil maybe to get him, but we've got it. Conte wants 152 million. I uh, might try to bring that down. Hopefully 140 million might be possible. And it looks like it will be. All right, then. Harry Kane will not be leaving the Premier League. He will be signing for Manchester United. Let's see how this 
move goes for him and for his career and also for the Red Devils as well. Kane moves up top at striker with Saka on the right for now, Ronaldo on the left still. Before we get advancing forward, I should also shout out Kobe Mino, who has joined us from the Youth Academy up and as well as that, we have got a certain Alejandro Garnacho in as well. I've got Daily Blind and De Herrera and Anthony Martial transfer listed, hopefully bring in a little cash there as well. And after letting them go, we appear to have 110 million left over. I know David De Gea is nearly close to leaving Manchester United and we won't be able to keep him, so will I be able to or should I get another keeper in? I reckon I might as well rather be safe than sorry and I am going to get another Spaniard goalkeeper in. Unai Simon, 83 rated. He'll get better than that. So he joins us now as well and it's probably going to be a battle between him and Andre Onana for who starts in goal when De Gea does go. We have three 89 rated players. Ronaldo, 88. De Gea, 87. And a lot of 80 plus rated players. God knows how many. It would have to be something close to 25 maybe plus 80 plus rated players. It's nuts. And all we've won in the last couple of years is a Carabao Cup? Nah, come on. We need to get back to winning the Premier League. Great bloody start, losing to Southampton. Can we get the Prem? Can we get into the Champions League final as well, please? Oh my goodness, we probably have our worst finish yet of this series. I can't understand how we're sliding so much in the Prem, but fourth place, nearly got third again, but unreal. We're like 11 points off of Man City. Carabao Cup, no good there. What about in the FA Cup? No good there. Man City, oh come on, they've won that as well. Thank God Real Madrid at least prevented them from winning the treble, but no final for us either. And guess what? It was Man City that beat us 4-1 on aggregate. Oh my God, this is heinous. This is also actually really interesting to look at. The starting 11, the, the overall as it goes throughout the season. Look at Ronaldo, dude. He started this season, I think, 88. He's down to 83 with the fact that he's so old, he drops off in overall. That is maybe a problem. That might be something I need to address as we head over to FC 24. In this season, the most recent season for Manchester United, we saw them bring in Rasmus Hoyland for a lot of money, 73 million. We've already brought in Harry Kane. I think we're okay there. They also brought in Mason Mount, which we're not going to recreate. And they also brought in Andre Onana, who we brought in ages ago. David De Gea ended up, of course, leaving Manchester United this season. He's not in FIFA anymore. So he becomes the highest rated goalkeeper that we have. Unai Simon is only 83. And the starting 11 has changed a lot now. Leao is at left wing. He's the same overall as Cristiano Ronaldo. And I'd much rather have him up top because his overall is not going to drop. Off. Musiala has moved into left center midfield as well. The back line, it's about the same. And there are a lot of players that are knocking on the door to getting into that team. Have a look at this bench, man. I mean, Rashford's up to a solid overall. Florian Verts is up there as well as even Gimaraj coming pretty close. But look, we've got a ridiculously solid squad. We have only got six players below an 80 overall, which means we have 28 players that are 80 or higher. And I, I swear if we don't win something this season, I, I just don't understand why we've been so poor toward the end. To have only basically won a Carabao Cup in the last four years with the team we have, it's bewildering. But what do we get this season? Well, finally, I don't know how, but it started to click again here. We are back on top of the Premier League. We win. What would this be now? I think our fourth of the rebuild. It's been too long. We also take home a Carabao Cup against Newcastle. Oh, man. Just like they did it in real life about a year or two ago. No such luck, sadly, in uh, in the FA Cup. It was won by Leeds. Shout out Carlisle United getting that far. Shame, because if we had won that FA Cup, we'd be on for a treble because we've also made the Champions League final. Oh, the first time in a long time. Made the semis last season. This time, we go a step further. Our starting 11 is a little gutted. Kane is at half stamina. Saka is suspended. I don't think I should start Kane. I've got Lukaku, 80 rated Ronaldo. See what I'm talking about? I might actually go with maybe Rashford at striker. We are down a couple of players, but it should hopefully still be okay. We're here at Wembley Stadium with a big opportunity to try to win a third Champions League in this rebuild and a third trophy in general this season. Taking on PSG, Mbappe will get the game underway. Fernandez is away. I can see Leao. Now he goes behind. Oh, for God's sakes. Might still be alive though. Come on, Musiala. Yes, that'll do it. 
And the lead has been taken. Jamal Musiala in the final at Wembley Stadium. He flicks it up and just smacks it into that top corner. We are 1-0 up against PSG. What a start to this one. Making his way into the Manchester United starting 11. And oh, only a second for the campaign. What a time to get it though. Oh, come on. It's opening up here. We can work this out. I think. Have it. Have it. A second. Come on now. This is looking great, isn't it? A 2 0 lead. We go bang, bang. A second goal straight away. I saw we had the out number. Havertz scores in Champions League finals. It's his thing, isn't it? He loves to do it. We have seen that before. We've done it again. The Germans are rocking up for us. Uh oh. I don't like that. Oh, that's just too kind of a bounce. And Asensio brings him back into it. Thought we would pull away after scoring that second goal. But no, that is just so kind. Couldn't block it. And that's it. Right, we're still not over yet. We still have the lead as we go into halftime. But only just now by the one. Oh, Casemiro. Play this one off. Rashford. I don't know about the fake shot. Oh, that fake shot worked out really well. Fernandez! Bruno Fernandez with the backflips. I didn't know he had that in his bag. But we've done the defender there with the fake shot right by Milan Skriniar. And that is our double goal advantage restored. Oh, Rash... Oh, disgusting. Walker, he's got to go for that, surely. What's the card going to be? Only a yellow. Get out of here, man. Just have a hit, Musial. It's not going to result in anything. But this one is over. We might still be able to get it. Rashford, cheeky back heel. Out to the left. Oh, Nuno Mendes just picks it off. I want to get this last goal. We're not going to get it. But we are going to get the Champions League. Just call it referee. There it is. We were down in the trenches for the last couple of years, but look where we are. Back on top of the mountain. We're European champions along with Premier League champions again. Different team, but the same captain. Bruno Fernandes lifts up the UCL trophy, and we still have a season to go. We've got our trophy haul going again. What can we wrap it up with in our final season? We have now matched the two Carabao Cup and two FA Cups that real life Manchester United won in this period. But now we've gone and stacked on four Premier Leagues and a third Champions League. What can we do with our final season in FC 25? <laughs> So here we are in FC 25. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the real life Manchester United team as it is right now. You can see that we've held on to some of these players, but aside from maybe Fernandez, Casemiro, Rashford, and a handful of others, it's a pretty different looking team. And finally now, here we are, people, in FC 25 with some star-studded new names and talent. Harry Kane is our highest rated player. We've got Van Dijk in, we've got Verts in, Saka, and Musiala. The highest rated actual Manchester United player from real life is still Bruno Fernandes. We've held on to Cristiano Ronaldo this entire time, even though he's probably not a starting 11 player for us anymore. Let's get advancing on forward, people. What can we win in our final season with Manchester United? Oof, um, I don't know what happened. We, 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 we had so many bad seasons toward the end here, and we've finished it off with another one. Probably, actually, maybe one of our worst ones. We're 15 points off of Man City. They dominated the Carabao Cup, and the FA Cup was won by Liverpool. Champions League didn't go great for us either. We didn't make the final. We go trophyless in our final season. Well, that is quite the bummer, but at least we get to finish on this. It is a total total of 11 trophies won throughout the rebuild that beats Manchester United's four in real life and we also get those three Champions Leagues and four Premier Leagues. I reckon we can live with that but ladies and gentlemen thank you all so much for watching. Let me know in the comments what team you want me to do another 10 year rebuild with next and until then my name's The Master Bucks. Don't forget to like and subscribe and of course if you've enjoyed this video then be sure to click on this one as well.